So what's gonna happen? Are you Bernie supporter or none of the above um, kind of guy? I'm voting for Gloria Lariva. Who? Gloria Lariva from the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Oh, oh I'm sorry. That's right. You're a commie. Okay. <laughs> a good commie is a... Should I continue? <laughs> I, I mean, it's my opinion about fascists, so I get it. <laughs> Communism was actually worse than fascism, believe it or not. Uh, my grandfather would disagree with you wholeheartedly. Well, I mean, judging by the numbers, they're both evil. It's just on the level of evilness. Uh, the communists stand way, way, way more evil than the Germans, and the numbers are 100 million uh, murdered by the communists. You Nobody was safe. You can't do that strictly based on that like yes you can there should there's another issue it has to do with population as well i mean population of what of china and the, the population ussr of germany to the population of the ussr plus china Fine. plus cuba plus okay. venezuela but do you agree that the 100 million people were murdered <laughs> by the way i don't know if i agree with that number but you don't agree okay so as far as venezuela is concerned by the way what's happening with venezuela like if i'm asking people they say well i'm not familiar enough with the issue it's so funny every single person that i spoke about they are familiar with so many so many uh different issues sometimes very obscure issues, and yet Venezuela, <laughs> which is kind of, you know, front page, well, they don't know enough, therefore they're not going to discuss it. I mean, are you familiar enough to discuss the Venezuela? I mean, you're a commie after all. Um, actually, I am somewhat comfortable with discussing Venezuela. Um, not 100% confident, but I... Okay, so explain the Venezuela for me. Let um, me see how a large part of the help. problem with Venezuela was that people were hoarding goods. Hoarding goods, that's the problem. Are you well, serious? That was Are you serious? People were hoarding um, like and food and water supplies. And also sanctions that choke Venezuela's really? trade affect them. Really? So that's what happened? How, how come is that before Hugo Chavez, uh, there was really no problem with toilet paper, proverbial toilet paper, or milk or, or staples like bread and so on? How come under Hugo, Hugo Chavez that wasn't a problem? It wasn't until after Hugo Chavez left office. Well, because it's taking time. It was getting worse and worse and what, worse and worse. 16 years? 17 years? Well, yeah, whatever it was. That's right. So it was gradually getting worse, so worse, come, and worse. So hold on. So how come when Obama came into office, he should have immediately reformed every single issue? But when Hugo Chavez came into office, it just took, it was just a slow burn. That's what happened. Okay, so you think that the, the reforms of Hugo Chavez were supposed to make life better, right? I think that the reforms of Hugo Chavez led to a 0% illiteracy rate. I think Hugo uh -huh. Chavez cut poverty in half. Uh -huh. I think that Hugo Chavez single-handedly eliminated USS not single-handedly, he had aid. Uh -huh. I think Hugo Chavez helped eliminate U.S. imperialism in the global south and specifically uh -huh. South America. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure how you could look at what Hugo Chavez did and say that what he did was evil. Okay, Honestly, uh, how? also recently, recent information has been, like, has emerged in the wake of Clinton's email scandal. Uh -huh. um, in her, in the, like, they found in the database of emails Pretty clear evidence that in the later days of Chavez's term, um, before he died, a lot of the problems in Venezuela were actually a direct result of undermining, undermining by the U.S. government. Um, Clinton's State Department had a lot to do with that. So it's um, our fault that they don't have toilet paper now. It's, it's our all, fault. It's, if you, no, it's if you don't let people fault. trade to make if money, yeah. yeah if you boy, if it's you, all our it's fault. It's like what's going on in Cuba. Like if you put in a huge economic blockade on a place and uh -huh. prevent them from being able to get resources, and you drive their allies away from them uh -huh. intentionally, which is what happened in Cuba and what happened in Venezuela in the later days of Chavez's rule. Oh, uh, this fly. In the later days of Chavez's rule in Venezuela. Uh, yeah. English is deceiving here now, but you know. Um, Do you speak another language? Do you speak Russian, maybe? Um, no, but you have learned Hey, but uh. <laughs> um, how, how do you explain that the country that has the largest reserve, reserves of oil can feed its own citizens? I mean, because when I got, just said, and I literally just said like 10 you seconds literally, ago that Hillary Clinton and Obama's State Department undermined how so? the government by how driving so? their allies away from them and intentionally trying to s stick a wedge between Chavez and his closest allies on top of an economic blockade undercover that crippled. Undercover cops are still undercover. Are we buying? Are we buying? 
multiple countries in the global south. We've overthrown multiple democratically elected governments. Not even, in, this doesn't even have any, not, let's completely ignore like the fact that we're, we're they've completely destroyed Venezuela and they've attempted uh-huh. to do so with Cuba and Cuba has rebounded as of late. Somehow they survived the absolute bullshit that the U.S. did to them. But I look, how many, look how many democratic governments have been overthrown by the U.S. government in the global south. Like, look at it. It's, ever, it's constantly... Democratic. Like, okay. Okay. Demo- like, um, can I have a second here? Sure. According to Mike we- Mark Weisbrot Center for Economic and Policy Research, uh-huh. the Venezuelan economy grew on average 11.85% in the period from 2004 to 2007. Uh-huh. For the year 2009, the Venezuelan global economy shrank by an average of 2.9% uh-huh. due to the global recession. Okay. During the past decade under Chavez, uh-huh. the income poverty rate in Venezuela dropped by more than half from 54% of households below poverty level in the first uh-huh. half of 2003 Great. to 26% by 2008. Great. Further, these poverty rates measure only cash income and doesn't take into account increased, increased access to health care or education. Dados reports real income grew by 137% between uh-huh. 2003 and quarter one of 2006. Official poverty figures dropped by 10%. However, the World Bank estimates that there are about 30% of people who still live below the poverty line uh-huh. currently. Uh-huh. Some social scientists and economists claim that the government's reported income poverty figures did not fail, did not fall in proportion to the country's vast petroleum revenues in the last two years, most of which was directed to social spending to decrease the cost of living. How can so, you explain lack of toilet paper, milk, sugar? Said that. I'm sorry, but you keep asking, okay, the, let same, me, you keep okay, asking let's, the same questions, and you keep going in cir- you keep going in circles, <laughs> in and circles. it doesn't make sense. Okay. You keep asking the same questions, and once we fucking answer them, you ask us to answer them again. Let that's me, all you're gonna do. Let, you just leave. Let like, me, that's all let you're me do, ask you another no, question. No, no, no. Okay, no, let me let me ask you another no, question. Shut, shush. If all you're gonna do is ask us the same damn questions, what I'll ask about? another question. We've, answer, we've asked the same damn questions. We've answered your fucking questions. You keep ans- asking the same shit, and you won't accept our answers. Like, we, you can't answer one specific. You have to address the entire fucking economic issue. You can't say, well, why is there toilet paper? I'm like, well, we fucking answered that. There's economic you problems did. right now as a direct result of U.S. intervention. And if uh-huh. you can't fucking accept that as an answer, then. I don't know what the fuck why to was, tell you. Why was there a grain shortage he, he, in the 1930s why, in the United States? Why was there, States? Well, yeah, why was there a he, grain he, shortage he, in the 1930s? Can I ask you that's a different question? Bullshit. Like, fuck that. No, shit. Can I ask you one more question? And it's I will not leave. the same shit. <laughs> different question. Do we buy oil today from Venezuela? <laughs> yeah, we do. I'm going to we go with, I do know that some uh, some oil is gifted from Venezuela to the United yeah. States. <laughs> it was also still being it's gifted during yeah, Johnson's Gifted. Yeah. So it is, probably, it is probable that the United States still probably purchases some of, some small qu- uh, quantity of oil from, uh, from Venezuela. But uh-huh. Just because the United States is purchasing some from Venezuela doesn't mean that the United States is not, you know, holding them by their fucking cojones and is not fucking ruining their economies in other ways. And right. like, and it's the same thing that they did, you know, in Honduras, El Salvador, doing, and the, and you know, in actually, like, Cuba. Cuba, Cuba, Cuba what, Colombia. What about Russia? Colombia. What about the USSR? We also choked them with the economic sanctions. We did, the no USSR. One could choke, no one really? Could trade with the USSR because of really? the USSR. Really? No, the only thing really? The United yeah, the only States really? The only thing of the world. Yeah, w- really? The USSR. Really? USSR. Nobody was doing business no, with the USSR. Really? No one traded with the USSR with the other countries in the socialist oh, bloc. The only country, really? Yeah, the only countries that traded with the USSR were other countries in the socialist bloc. I roll them. Sorry. Really? Yeah. And who do you think the USSR was selling oil to? And you know that the USSR is. Well, one of the, if not the largest, it went through, uh, s- it went through middlemen. They could only trade. They couldn't trade. They, they couldn't trade directly. I mean, all we knew other- about the Cold War was all the proxy, all the proxy wars, right? Yeah. I mean, on the other hand, the U.S. was trading with El Duce, Der Fuhrer, and Franco. So, you know, yeah, we were trading where with are we, Franco. where are we drawing that line at? No, but that's besides the point. The point is, wait, wait. wait. No, no, when no. we talk about when we talk about economic sanctions, I thought that and, was the point. And no, the point, no, the point was that they didn't have enough money because of the economic blockade. But right now, you just said that both Venezuela and, 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 and USSR and USSR were selling their resources uh, uh, you know, to the West on the free, free market, oil. Okay, what about oil was Cuba? flowing. Well, I mean, Cuba is a different story. But we're talking. Uh, how is Cuba different? It's the same shit. We well, the, 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 shit, the shit is different because no, Venezuela. Well, Venezuela is sitting in the largest reserves of oil. That's the difference. Cuba doesn't have those reserves of oil. So that's why the question is, and I don't want to repeat myself, is that why you so sorry? Forget about Venezuela. We have a huge reserve of oil. 
reserve of oil too, but we can't dig and it that's up. That's why we are so prosperous, aren't no, we? There's a huge <laughs> Do we have toilet paper? We have a huge reserve of oil that we can't access. And that is part of the problem in Venezuela is if they if they get all of that oil out of the ground, it will completely demol it will destroy their land. They won't have anything left. Like it's the same shit in the United States. We have a lot, we have a lot of oil that is underground uh -huh. that we cannot get to. Why? Because if we get to it, it will destroy the land that, that oil is on. Really? And it will completely it will completely ruin our economy. Really? It will ruin it'll ruin the like it'll it will it'll it won't just upset the balance of the ecosystem. But it'll also unintentionally cripple our economy because if we destroy all of our arable land, who, how the hell are we gonna grow food? And how much? If we destroy our arable land, trying to go, trying to to uh, extract oil, to to get to abstract oil, get oil from the ground, then how how are we going? How are we going to grow food if we destroy all our arable land? It's like um. And then how how do you think oil is? is you know, in North Korea right now, North 50, only fifteen percent of North Korea's land is arable. They can only grow fifteen grow food on fifteen percent of their land. Uh huh. Because the rest because it, the rest of the land is either too rocky or has been destroyed by imperialists associated bad agricultural practices so they only have 15 percent of their land is arable uh -huh. and that's part of why they're starving now that's the reason why that's part of why that's part of why they're okay starving hold now. on let me let me change the battery I was just mentioning like in terms of like arable farmland and in terms of getting oil from the ground like a lot of the oil on the earth that is still there has to be left underground. It has to be left. It but needs the, to be left there. Because if we if we draw it all out, then it's we'll gonna, destroy the ecosystem. Really? Yeah. Because it's in, a lot of the oil is under really delicate land. Really? And if we get the oil and out... It how will, deep is oil located? How deep is it? In 1948, the United States began a campaign of economic sanctions against the Soviet Union that would last more than 50 years. In March that uh -huh. year, the Department of Commerce announced restrictions on exports to the USSR and its exports. European allies. Exports. Exports. There's Congress a difference. Congress formalized these restrictions in the Export Control Act Export. of 1949. Export. Originally, Congress intended this act as a temporary measure to keep arms and strategic measures out of the hands Export. of potential allies. Export. Yeah. Say export. Read about import. That's still, I mean, if we cut off all of our No, no, no. Exports. It's, no, it's export. When the Russians are buying something. If everyone, if we weren't allowed They pay money when, when we export. If we weren't allowed to import anything, it would cripple our No, no, no. He said export, too. not import. If we weren't allowed, but they weren't, they weren't allowed to import things. So if we, that's the economic sanctions. They weren't allowed really? to bring anything in. Really? That's what he just fucking said. <laughs> Can you not fucking listen? Can you just fucking leave, please? The, the point of, the point Can of. Can you just fucking? You're not. You no, you're belittling us. I don't appreciate your fucking tone. Seriously, fucking leave. Just fucking go. Okay, okay, I will go. leave. Fine, okay, okay. Seriously, See ya. you're not going to listen to us. Okay. You literally are just laughing at okay, everything we bye. fucking say. That's, I don't appreciate that. Bye-bye. You aren't even fucking listening to us. <laughs> don't stop wasting your fucking time. Just go. Okay, I'm leaving. Bye-bye.